everybody, Daniel here from Basement Tech. Well, what is this Frankenstein machine you see sitting in front of you? Before I get into that, I did want to provide my usual set of warnings and cautions and perhaps one or two extras. Uh, this project uses mains power, as the Brits would say, hundred or, sorry, 220 volts out of the wall, and that's dangerous. If you're not comfortable with that, please consult a qualified electrician or electrical expert who can help you um, with that kind of thing. Secondly, this is definitely not a how-to video, but a how I did it video. These are the components I had, and I just wanted to put them together to see if I could do something useful. Finally, this is a breadboard proof of concept sort of construction. I would never put this on the factory floor exactly in the way it sits in front of you with all of those exposed wires, etc. So please don't just copy this construction and put it in a place where people can get hurt. So what is a rotary phase converter in general? Well, a rotary phase converter takes um, what's commonly called single phase, available in a lot of homes and shops, and um, produces three-phase power that can run big three-phase motors like this one here. This one here actually has a different function, which I'll get into when I talk about sort of the high-level theory of rotary phase converters. Now, half of you are already screaming, Dan, just use a VFD, a variable frequency drive, or more commonly called a drive. I don't disagree with you at all. VFDs are very convenient and they provide additional functionality that being speed control and uh, forward and reverse. Um, however, as I said at the outset, this was a learning project for me. And many people actually use um, these rotary phase converters because I believe they produce a more, say, clean output power given the way they generate uh, three phase power. So what's on the breadboard? Let me give you the quick tour and then I'm gonna back up and provide you some high level theory and then we'll do a little demo of how it works. So, um, as I said, believe it or not, these components are a collection that I've made over the last, oh, I don't know, five or 10 years. And it all came together when I was uh, gifted this little box called a phase o -matic. Now, if you, I zoom in, you can see it says um, single phase full load amps 9.6 but it also says uh, somewhere in the documentation that this device can run a three-phase motor on single-phase power. Now that's partially correct. Uh, actually, there it is. Runs 220-volt three-phase motors on 220-volt single-phase power. I believe that to be true, but I also believe that you, when you use a device like this, do not get um, the full power out of the three-phase motor uh, seems kind of like uh, theoretically uh, not possible, but it is a way to get your three-phase motors to spin. Um, anyway, backing up and continuing the tour. So power comes in here, goes through this phase matic two wires in, three wires out. Um, those three wires pass through there, come into the contactor on this side, come out of the contactor on this side and go two places, over here to the motor and then over here to the load. Now, uh, the astute among you have noted this is not in fact a three phase twist lock, but a 220 volt three wire plus ground twist lock. That happens to be the one on the load I was using for testing, so that's why I copied it. I do have the actual bona fide three phase outlet, which I'll, I'll uh, swap in eventually. Finally, the little device in the middle is just a transformer. Um, it takes 220 volts in on the top and produces 120 volts at the bottom. The reason I needed that is I only brought two wires in, so just 220 volts, and I needed 120, or 110 as it says here, for the coil of the contactor. Finally, there are a couple switches up there that do some interesting things. Let me grab the documentation from phase o -matic, and it'll show you generally in diagram form what I copied. So uh, as you see on the left, 220 comes in. Uh, phase o -matic generates all three phases temporarily just to get the motor started. Um, then you disconnect that third wire, B, using one of the two switches you saw in the silver box. 
and then you can pull three-phase power out. Now, where does the three-phase power come from? Well, there are many videos and a lot of theory about how that happens, but the magic of a three-phase induction motor is if you can get it spinning with two of the phases, through its internal induction and magnetic magnetics will actually generate the third phase. Then you can pull some part of that power out to power um, other three-phase motors. Now, what was my immediate goal? Well, this is a buffer, and although it's small, if I zoom in, you can see it is a three-phase, three-quarter horsepower motor. So that was my immediate goal, and call it my test load um, to see if I can make that happen. Um, there are a lot of things I can cover and talk about here. Um, I did want to talk about a couple compromises I made. Um, Again, because these are the parts I had. If you read the phasomatic documentation, and actually I'll show you the inside of one of these things, they're pretty simple. Um, the documentation recommends a 3450 RPM motor to give you more momentum uh, for starting up your external loads. This happens to be a roughly 1700 RPM three phase motor, and it seems um, uh, to work anyway. As I mentioned, I'm using a 120 volt coil, so I had to complicate it a little with this transformer. Um, let's see, there were a couple other things. Um, I mentioned the outlet. This isn't the ideal outlet. I do have that one, and I will um, swap that out when I move this, uh, package this up better and get it down to our shop. And finally, the manual startup with these couple of switches. Um, I mean, it's okay for me. I'm an electrical engineer and I understand how it works, but I'll have to write some very clear instructions if this actually gets uh, put into use. So since I characterized this phase matic as the magic of this system, what's actually going on inside there? Well, I actually was gifted two of them. One of them turned out to have a completely useless capacitor. Um, it is that capacitor that does most of the work of this little box. Um, if you look at the terminal strip here at the end, there are three wires. Two of those three wires are my 220 volt coming in. The third wire is the phase that is, and this is the magic, generated by this box temporarily to get my motor started. A three phase motor needs all three phases to know which direction it's supposed to spin. So this box generates that third phase. How does it do that? Well, this device here, the rectangular device, is a relay. Um, this is partially taken apart. I harvested some parts out of this one to make the other one work. So that's why it's all disconnected, but you can still get the idea. There's just a big whopper capacitor and um, the electrical engineers and others among you know, if you put power in one side, the voltage, um, the phase of the voltage will be shifted coming out the other side. Now it's not 120 degrees, which is the phase difference between the phases of uh, three phase, but it's close enough to get the motor started. Three phase motors apparently need um, three phases to know which direction to spin um, and to get themselves started. Some of you know, those of you who have worked with three phase motors much more than me, know if your motor's spinning in the wrong direction, you're a three phase motor. Basically, you just switch two of the leads and it'll spin in the other direction, apparently. So that's the idea. This box temporarily, through use of this relay down here, uh, generates the third phase, gets the motor spinning, and then the motor generates the third phase, which through these wires goes on and is presented at this load. Quick note about my three-phase idler motor. Uh, I think this probably is the same for many three-phase motors. Uh, they can be jumpered, in this case, for 208, uh, 240, and 480. Um, so I had to make sure it was jumpered in this con this configuration on the left, which puts the um, the coils of the motor in parallel for 240 volt. They call that low voltage operation. So just make sure your motor is jumpered properly if you intend to attempt something like this. All right, well, all I suppose that's left is a demo. Let me walk through the sequence because there'll be a little noise once things get up and running. I'll first engage this switch, which allows the generated phase from the phasomatic to make it through to the other components. 
and then I'll flick this switch, which will engage the contactor and send the, that three phase on to the motor and uh, to the load. Our load in this case is just this little buffer. It's a three phase, three quarter horsepower. It has its own power switch, which we will use to make sure it doesn't start until the idler motor is up and running. All right, let's do it. So main power here. I'll engage the generated phase here trying very carefully not to touch any exposed wires. Now the next one will be the big clunk and the idler motor starting. So let's do that with this switch. Then as the instructions for the phase matic say, I'm going to disconnect the generated phase. Now I should be generating three, the motor itself, the idler motor is generating three phase, which is making it through the contactor to the plug. So when I flip the switch over here, on the buffer, away it goes. The, I didn't hear the idler motor slow down too much, so I think we're in pretty good shape. Well, there you have it. I think it's a rotary phase converter. Let me know if you think it is in the comments below. Or if you have a lot of experience with this thing, these things and want to share some of your experience, please do so in the comments. If you like this kind of video, kind of a what happens when you put random parts together video, um, give it a thumbs up. If you really like this kind of video or CNC videos or other microcontroller projects, please subscribe. Thanks and talk to you soon.